welcome back to a brand new video on the channel guys so what we have for you guys today is going to be another episode of the championship roundup guys so uh, in this video here today we're going to be going over every game that did take place over the weekend in the championship and have a little bit of a discussion about it and uh, this weekend guys we've got a lot of talking points to go ahead and go over quite a dramatic weekend in the championship we've seen a lot of goals scored this weekend and uh, a few controversial decisions as well. So as always guys, I am very interested to get your guys' opinions on what you thought of your team's performance this weekend. So make sure you do leave a comment in the comments down below as to what you thought of your team's performance. Also as well, what did you think was the goal of the weekend and what do you think was the result of the weekend? I'll be revealing what I thought they were at the end of the video, but I'm interested to know what you guys had to say. So just before we do get into any of this weekend's action guys, I will include your guys' comments on screen now. So if any of you guys did successfully manage to get any of the score lines correct this weekend, I will put your comment on screen now. So fair play to everyone who got a prediction correct this weekend. This week I managed to get two of my score predictions correct. So not the not the best, not the worst for me. I'll take two. Let's get into some of the action. So our first game that we had to discuss was the game taking place between Aston Villa and Fulham. Now, uh, in my opinion, this could be a pivotal match in Aston Villa season. Of course, they were coming off the back of that pretty poor performance last time out against Wolves and coming up against this Fulham side who have been pretty impressive so far this season it wasn't going to be an easy game for them and it was imperative in my opinion that they did immediately have a reaction from that and get back to winning ways you know too many times last season we saw Aston Villa be far too inconsistent and lose two or three games on the row and then Ultimately, that's why they missed out on the playoffs last year. So they can't be affording to do that in this one. And fair play to them. It was a very good performance from them. John Terry gave them the lead in the 23rd minute. And uh, Fulham managed to equalise just before half-time with a fantastic free kick from Johansson. But then Aston Villa managed to regain control with an Albert Adoma goal just into the second half. And uh, that was probably deserved for Villa. I thought they were probably the better side in this game. Created quite a few chances and probably could have had a penalty later on as well with Jonathan Codger being bundled over but uh, they do have quite a lot to thank Sam Johnson for once again he had a terrific performance for Villa and uh, probably been one of their players of the season so far he made one superb save in the second half to deny Fulham Fulham created chances just couldn't finish them all fair play to Villa and in our next game saw Hull City get an away victory at Oakwell against Barnsley in the end Fraser Campbell's goal was enough to send Hull City home with all three points in this one and uh, obviously uh, the flow of the whole game I thought Barnsley would have been very disappointed not to get anything out of this you know created quite a few chances in this one but their final product in this game really was lacking you know in the first half I don't think Hull had even had a shot up to that point and uh, Barnsley just been very wasteful with their chances really you know these are the sort of games that Barnsley you know need to be picking up points this season if they don't want to be in the round the bottom of the table come the end of the season and uh, in the end you know that's ultimately come back to pay for them you know Hull City were clinical with the one real good chance they had in this game with Fraser Campbell and in the end that will have left Barnsley frustrated and then into our next game we do go this was the first game of the weekend which I managed to predict that was the Bolton against QPR game which in the end did finish as a 1-1 draw and uh, going into this game I was talking about Bolton needing to pick up at least a point in this one realistically you know of course they finally got their first victory of the season last weekend and it's imperative for them really that they build a platform to build on you know that wasn't just a one-off result they need to build on that and uh, fair play to them in the first half I thought that they maybe could have gone to get more than one goal really keep you not at their best in the first half I didn't think Bolton were causing them a couple of problems with their set pieces especially which QPR seemed to struggle with but uh, flipping that into the second half I thought QPR showed a massive improvement and uh, it was Luke Freeman once again the creator for the QPR goal which they managed to tuck away and uh, after that a couple of shaky moments for Bolton you know QPR possibly could have gone on to win this game but in the end it's a solid point for Bolton and then into our next game we do go we then had a very dramatic game taking place at Brentford which in the end managed to finish as a 3-3 draw and uh, Brentford and Sunderland fans I would love to get your guys perspectives on what you thought of this game in the comments down below because this was uh, just a very topsy-turvy 
Derby game, I think that's fair to say. In the first half, I thought that Brentford would have been quite really disappointed, actually, with some of their defending, you know. They were really looking leaky at the back, and ultimately that led to Sunderland getting the three goals in the first half. And uh, we're taking a 3-1 lead into half-time Sunderland. Surely you've got to be seeing that out, you know. And uh, in the second half, Brentford just took the game to Sunderland. And uh, probably something that it did happen a couple times with Preston under Simon Grayson, you know. When you would get a lead like this, he's all, he'd always look to protect the lead instead of going for more goals. And uh, in the end, that did manage to cost Sunderland as Brentford in the second half got two second half goals, one of them being a superb free kick into the top corner. But uh, in the end, Brentford managed to pull it back to 3-3 in the 78th minute. And oh, they probably even could have gone on to win the, win the game, but uh, created a lot of chances. Sunderland, I'm sure, are very frustrated. Then into our next game, we do go win and had Bristol City, who came up against Leeds United. And in the end, it was Leeds who have managed to successfully get back to winning ways with a very convincing 3-0 win away to Bristol City so uh, going into this game I was anticipating this one to be quite a close one you know both teams have showed at times this season they're both capable of some great attacking play but in the end it was Leeds who completely flipped this game on its head and uh, got to the perfect start in this game with Sice grabbing two goals in just 15 minutes and Bristol City I thought would have been quite disappointed with their defending all the goals they conceded in this one were avoidable, in my opinion, from a Bristol City standpoint. But that's not taking anything away from Leeds. They more than deserve this victory. And, of course, going forward as well, Bristol City looked a little bit limp, you know, compared to how they have done so far this season. But one of the big talking points from this game were the two red cards, of course, and the scrap which just escalated from that. And uh, one of which being Matty Taylor being sent off for Bristol City. I've watched the replays back, and honestly, I don't know why he got sent off. Bristol City and Leeds fans, what do you make of that? But in the end, a very convincing victory for Leeds. And then for our next game, we then had Derby County, who came up against Sheffield Wednesday. And in the end, it was Derby who managed to seal the 2-0 victory over Wednesday. And uh, I think it's fair to say they were highly aided by Wednesday, playing pretty much the whole of this game with 10 men, thanks to Leuven's being sent off just four minutes in. That, of course, gave Derby a penalty, which Vidra stuck away. But after that, I didn't think Derby... Derby were brilliant, you know, playing against 10 men for the entirety of the game. I really thought they'd have really pressed high up the pitch and really gone for this game, but they did miss quite a few opportunities, especially after they got that goal, and at times I thought Sheffield Wednesday were going to get back into the game, you know. Sheffield Wednesday missed some great opportunities in this one. Hooper had a very good chance, Stephen Fletcher had a great chance that he put wide, and uh, possibly they could have had a penalty as well, so another contentious decision there by a referee, but in the end it was Bradley Johnson who wrapped up the three points for Derby. So, uh, Sheffield Wednesday fans, I'm in no doubt that you must not be happy at the moment with how things are going at the club. And uh, quite a bit of pressure is being put on the manager at Wednesday so far. So, I'd be interested to know what you guys are thinking. And then into our next game we do go with and had Middlesbrough, who came up against Cardiff City. And in the end, it was the away side who managed to leave with the 1-0 victory. And uh, I think it's fair to say Cardiff did quite well in this game, actually, to really nullify Middlesbrough's attacking intent for large majorities of it, you know. Probably wasn't the best game in terms of the spectacle of the weekend as uh, Cardiff, I thought, were quite a resilient side in this one. Looked very organised defensively and, of course, that frustrated Middlesbrough for large amounts of the game and then when Cardiff finally got their chance with a penalty, they, of course, converted that. But uh, this defeat for Middlesbrough now has seen them fall even further down the championship into 13th place now. So, uh, Middlesbrough fans, what's your current opinion on everything going around at the club at the moment? Definitely not the start to the season that you guys would have been expecting but uh, this start to the season now keeps Cardiff at second in the championship putting pressure on Wolves at the top of course and uh, in the end it was a very solid performance from them so fair play. And then for our next game that saw Nottingham Forest get back to winning ways with a 2-0 victory over Burton Albion and uh, Forest did have to wait a little bit for their first goal to come that came in the second half in the 58th minute thanks to a goal from Barry Mackay and uh, there's some about Burton Albion which seems to be they do seem to have these good defensive performances but when the side that they're playing against gets that first
first goal, you always tend to worry about them as uh, after that, going forward, Burton didn't really show enough in this game really to justify getting anything from it and uh, Forrest managed to take full advantage of that with Lee Height wrapping up the three points and uh, his celebration, I don't know what that was about, just ran the length of the pitch to celebrate with everyone but uh, fair play to him, he was of course happy to get a goal in this one but uh, Burton uh, struggling a little bit to get goals at the moment, I think that could be an issue for them but uh, Forrest back to winning ways now and deservedly so. And the next game saw Sheffield United continue their just ridiculous start to the season with another three points, this time over Reading. And uh, in terms of the first half performance from Sheffield United, they looked absolutely fantastic in this one. Definitely in control of the game. And honestly, if it wasn't for Vito Minone making quite a few decent saves for Reading, Sheffield United could have gone to get three or four goals in this game. You know, going forward, some of their movement is really excellent, you know, and uh, it, it's just baffling to see that they were only in League One last season. But uh, it was Paul Coops who gave them the lead with a fantastic effort from outside the box and then Billy Sharp managed to grab his goal as well to make it 2-0 and uh, in the second half Reading showed a little bit of an improvement Beeren's got a consolation goal from them but uh, uh, ultimately that was never going to be enough for them and uh, Sheffield United definitely deserved the three points and then for our next game we do go we then had Wolves who came up against my club Preston North End and in the end it was a 3-2 victory for Wolves and oh god oh, it was a dramatic game I think that's fair to say in the end finishing 3-2 to Wolves and uh, in terms of how this game went in the first I'd probably say half an hour Preston were really looking good in this one you know we we're creating chances just not being clinical enough you know we were quite wasteful with some of the chances we had early on and uh, in terms of the whole game I don't think Wolves were brilliant I don't think they were at their best from what we have seen them from them at times this season but you know considering if they're scoring three goals when they're not at their best that's a sign of good things to come in my opinion but uh, all the goals from a Preston perspective were avoidable definitely you know the first one took about three rebounds the second one the penalty and the third one uh, being a bit of a lucky goal for Wolves but uh, ultimately I thought Preston got a little bit unlucky not to get anything from the game of course we're 3-0 down at one point managed to bring it back to 3-2 and had quite a few opportunities Late on to get that equaliser as well but uh, in terms of how I thought the whole game went I thought Preston did deserve a point but fair play to Wolves they took their chances and then our next game was the evening kickoff on Saturday between Millwall and Birmingham and uh, for this game it was the home side Millwall who managed to get the 2-0 victory and get back to winning ways in this one and continue their impressive home record for this season you know this one was never going to be an easy game for Birmingham of course being Steve Cottrell's second game in charge for this one I thought I'd have been a little bit disappointed really with the performance. Going forward, Birmingham couldn't really get anything to click. They had a couple of chances. I mean, Che Adams had an alright chance. So did Isaac Vassell as well. But apart from that, they weren't really getting too much going forward. And uh, in the end, you know, this Millwall side was always going to punish them, you know. Quite, qu play quite a direct style of play. I thought that Steve Morrison had a good game in this one. He was causing all sorts of problems for the Birmingham defence. And uh, ultimately, they were too much for them, you know. In the end, it was a Colin own goal and a ton of Cliff one which managed to wrap it up for them and then our last game to go ahead and talk over was the game taking place on Sunday the East Anglian derby where it was Norwich who managed to get the 1-0 away victory and claim the bragging rights and all three points in this one so uh, in terms of how this game went Ipswich missed a lot of opportunities especially in the first half you know fair play to Norwich for proving me wrong for this one you know I was predicting an Ipswich victory for this one and uh, one of the large reasons for that was because I thought the apes which would be too much for Norwich when they had set pieces and their crosses going into the box in the first half that was definitely Ipswich's game plan but they missed a whole lot of really good opportunities you know Garner had a great chance McGoldrick had a great chance which he headed over the bar Wycorn was in and around dangerous areas but couldn't get anything going and uh, in the end Norwich managed to punish them for that you know it was a fantastic finish from James Madison definitely a form player for Norwich at this point in time and definitely a player to keep your eye on for the rest of the season. A great finish into the back of the net which managed to seal the three points for Norwich. So fair play to Norwich for proving me wrong. Ipswich not clinical enough going forward. So guys there were all the games that did take place this weekend in the championship. So in terms of my goal of the weekend, a couple of decent goals this weekend. Definitely in contention for this one but for me I'm going to give it to Paul Coots for his goal against Red a great one from outside the box. Minone stood no chance with that. 
that's my goal of the weekend. And then my result of the weekend, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Leeds United. Bristol City at home this season have been very impressive, but Leeds absolutely took the game to them and managed to get a convincing 3-0 victory. So guys, there you have it. That will wrap it up for this episode of the Championship Roundup. So if you have enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you do leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. And make sure you check out all the other links in the description down below. As well as that, guys, make sure you subscribe for regular championship content. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.